to Word Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? Page 105 says, Thou word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray, and I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine, asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, is a Greek word for spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the spirit. In particular, we're going to be looking at something that is perhaps off the beaten path. Now, when I say off the beaten path, that means something that we don't normally or ordinarily or many churches don't delve into, yeah, to that greater uh, 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 of an extent, that is. Because the book of Revelation is considered to be, uh, well, ununderstandable or, or very difficult to understand or too many metaphors, too many similes, yeah, too many things that I don't get. Dr. A, but it's there for a purpose, yes? Otherwise, God would not have written it if it wasn't uh, necessarily, yeah? Uh, The the Greek word is apocalypsis for the word revelation. And the Greek word for reveal is apocalypto. That means to reveal something that had been hidden for years and years and years, yes, before the apostle John was given the revelation, yeah, or the unveiling of that word of God, yeah. And we call it the revelation because something has been revealed to us, something we didn't know. As a matter of fact, many of the apostles, yeah, during that period or during that era, if you will, did not know what the Apostle John had revealed to him because they, many of them, had already passed on, yes, moved on into heaven. Now, perhaps they knew it then because they were in heaven, right? I don't know whether we're going to immediately, when we get into heaven, going to know everything, yeah, Probably not. And the reason being is because only God knows everything. So therefore, we know that those apostles, the apostle Paul, the apostle uh, Peter, the apostle James, and many others did not know because it had not been revealed to the apostle John. Now, somebody asked me once for Dr. Ray, how old was the apostle John? Did the apostle John die before, when I say die, leave the earth body before or after the Apostle Paul? Well, I believe it was after the Apostle Paul. Yeah, the Apostle Paul, because the Apostle Paul was one of the martyrs. If you know what a martyr is, somebody who was killed for the body of Christ or for his belief in Christ, in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Many times back there, many of the apostles uh, were, they, they were martyrs. They were, they, they were killed. They were, they, they were slain for their belief in, uh, and for preaching the gospel of, of Yeshua Jesus. Yes. Now, nowadays, uh, we don't have that in this country where people are killed, as it were, or threatened with death for their beliefs. We don't have that, thank God. Yeah. Now, somebody said, well, ultimately, perhaps we will. Yeah. Well, we don't look forward to something like that, but it could happen. It's possible in this earth realm, if you will, that we're going to have that for those of us who are true. Underline the word true, true believers, because there are many, many, many churches and many, many denominations and many, many uh, 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 different religions and so forth today that purport, if you will, to be Christians. But it, as Sammy Davis Jr. would say, it ain't necessarily so that they are. But we know that we know that we know that there are many who are yeah, true believers in, in Yeshua Jesus. Now, if you've got a Bible, we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation. If you're talking about Revelation, yeah, it, it would be crazy not to look at it. So therefore, we're going to be looking at the book of Re- Revelation chapter 2, as a matter of fact. We're looking at the churches in in those days, some 2,000 years ago, more or less, there were churches, yes. Many, there were seven in particular that the Bible mentions. Now, we could say those are churches and are church ages, if you will. 
Egypt, yeah? Starting from A.D. 70 all the way down through, what, what is it? Uh, 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 19, uh, not 19, 2018, yes. Yeah, all the way down. We're going to get all the way down in those churches that are revealed in the book of Revelation. We're going to find out which specific one refers to us today. We're going to look at that, yeah? Because we need to know that we know that we know where we are, yeah? As far as the churches that, ha that, that, that uh, ha the word that has been revealed to those churches by <clears throat> the angel of John, yeah? That word came from God to the angel to John. So somebody said that then John's uh, information is third person, right? Actually it is, because he came from the angel, it came from God to the angel to John. Now we're getting fourth, we're the first, a fourth, if you will. <clears throat> now notice, if you will, in your Bible, we're going to be looking at a particular church. Now this church is called Smyrna. Smyrna. Smyrna means Smyrna means what? Means bitterness. Why does it why does it mean bitterness? In the Greek language, the word Smyrna means bitterness. Why was Smyrna bitter? Yeah, because you would think, okay, this is the body of Christ. We're supposed to be joyful and happy and everything going perfectly correctly. Yeah, well, you know, as Sammy Davis would say, some of you don't know who Sammy Davis Jr. was, right? Yeah, well, he came along during the uh, Frank Sinatra. You know who Frank Sinatra was, yeah. Well, he came along during that uh, time period in this earth realm, and they were they were good friends, yeah. Very good friends, as a matter, a matter of fact. And... <clears throat> Of course, Sammy Davis recorded a song called it, it called, it ain't necessarily so. Now, I realize that ain't is pr not proper grammar, yeah, she says isn't necessarily so. But, it, it, you know, ain't goes better than isn't, if you will, so it ain't. It mean, is not, yeah, necessarily so. That's why I mention that once in a while because in their song. Now, in the song there, I don't agree with the song necessarily in what it was saying because in the song it says Methuselah lived 900 years, but it ain't necessarily so. Well, he actually did a little over 900 years, 913 or whatever it was, something like that. <clears throat> once you get over 900, I guess you could stop counting. Yeah, perhaps. Notice. Then, in your Bible, Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 8. Yeah? Now, an angel is giving this information, right? Notice what it says in verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. <clears throat> now, who's doing the writing? Is it the angel writing or is it the apostle John? John, the John who wrote the book of John, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, yeah? John is the one that's doing the writing, yeah? And it, it, it is being dictated, if you will, by the angel. And where did the angel get the information from? Got it from Jesus, yeah? Notice. And he says, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. In other words, uh, it's not like, uh, it, I, I've heard, well, okay, he was raised. You've heard that God was raised, yeah? But 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 remember what Jesus told his disciples when they were telling him about the temple, yeah? He said that temple would be totally destroyed, yeah? And he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise I." Yeah, personal pronoun, I will raise it up again. Yeah, in other words, he's going to raise himself up again, as it were. Notice, the first and the last who was dead. Now, why do they use the term dead? You know, Because they wanted for our benefit, yeah, you to know that you know that you know that you know that Jesus actually was dead. In other words, not breathing, no heart, no heartbeat, no nothing. Yeah. No pulse. No, no. He was dead. Yeah. Okay. And came to life. Okay. Now, I'd like to see somebody else do that, right? I've never seen anybody just come to life. Have you? Yeah. Somebody who's actually pronounced, I mean, uh, how would you call it? Physiologically? Yeah. Physiologically dead and then came back to life. 
Well, I've heard of people, you know, that uh, who say that okay, I was dead and I went to heaven and I saw thus and so and so forth like that. Somebody wrote a book about some kid that uh, had died and he went supposedly went to heaven. Then they found out that well, what he was saying, as Sammy Davis Jr. would say, ain't necessarily so. They found out that that was in fact a fraud, if you will. That this person who this child, this young man who said he died and he saw his grandfather and so forth in heaven, well. It turned out that what he had said in the book was not necessarily so. Okay, <clears throat> but Jesus, on the other hand, actually was dead. I know your work, it says in verse 9, your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. Now, how can you be rich and poor at the same time? You know, I think I mentioned this the last time that we talked, being rich and poor at the same time. Well, rich, yeah. They were rich, spiritually speaking, but they were poor, materially speaking. How they get poor? Well, the, the truth of the matter is the way that, that uh, the church in Smyrna got poor is because of the Jews. Yeah. So you talk talking about the Jews, Dr. Ray. You don't like Jews. I love Jews. You know, If you want to know the truth of the matter, I love the Jews, the Jewish people. Yeah, they're God's chosen people, yes? And somebody said, well, God, why did God choose them, Dr. Ray? Why didn't he choose the Arabs or the Africans or the Hispanics or the Japanese or, or, or their various other uh, or nationalities? Why didn't he choose one of those? Why the Jews? Well, you know what? Guess who you got to ask that question of? Ask God. He can tell you why. Okay. <clears throat> Notice. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not. Remember when we talked about that briefly, what it means to be a Jew? Yeah. Many people think that, well, you got to be born in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have a particular mother and a particular father with a particular type of blood running in their veins. Yeah. In order for you to be a genuine, if you will, Jew. Ain't, I keep referring to Sammy Duffy Jr. for whatever reason. That ain't necessarily so that you have to do that, yeah? You don't have to be born of the blood or in Israel or anywhere near Israel, yeah? You can be a Chinese and be a Jew, yeah? So you say, well, I don't get it, Dr. Ray. What, what, uh, what's up with that? You know, I, I just don't get it. That's why I don't read the book of Revelation. Oh, that's why you don't read it, uh, perhaps, yeah? Well, okay, the truth of the matter is that uh, Jew, the word Jew, is not a nationality as such, yeah? It doesn't mean that you're of a particular, a particular nation or, or a particular people. Yeah, you can be a Jew without being from Israel or from any of the tri 12 tribes of Jacob. Yeah, <clears throat> you don't have to be from those. You don't even have to be from the tribe of Judah. As a matter of fact, that's where the word Jew came from, yeah? Because originally, the, the Jews were, 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 were called Hebrews, yes? Remember that, yeah? Uh, Abraham was called a Hebrew, as, as, because Abraham was before, yeah, the 12 tribes of, uh, 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 of Jacob. <clears throat> when I say the 12, 12 tribes of Jacob, I'm talking about his 12 sons. Jacob had 12 sons, yes? <clears throat> And uh, they became the 12 tribes of Israel, if you will. <clears throat> Notice then, I want to show you something that is very important, if you will, <clears throat> on becoming a Jew. Yeah. There were many Jewish proselytes, as not You know what a proselyte is? Somebody say, you're making terms I don't understand, Dr. Ray. Well, a proselyte is one who has embraced if you will, or or, or, or has been or, or has been added to the Jewish uh uh, religion. Now, I say religion because it is, in essence, a religion, not a nationality, if you will. Okay, to be a Jew. <clears throat> if you are a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ, you are, in fact, a Jew. You've been grafted in to the Jewish nation, yeah, as it were. Okay, <clears throat> so you're a Jew, if you're a believer. Even Jews who are not believers are not Jews, yeah. They're 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 un Jew, if you will. Yeah. Now some people say, well, okay, Dr. Ray, I can can I get myself circumcised and then I'll be a Jew? That wouldn't make you a Jew because you're circumcised. Yeah. There are many Jews that have been circumcised who are not true Jews. Okay. Now let's move right along, if you will. Can we move right along? Yeah. Well, we're gonna move right along anyway. What did I say about uh the meaning of the word uh smyrna? It means bitterness. And the reason why is because if you were in the church at Smyrna, 
some 2,000 years or so, more or less, ago, <clears throat> there was a, a lot of, uh, of uh, persecution against the Jews. So I think you can't think of remember the word persecution, Dr. Ray? Persecution against those, that church in Smyrna by the Jews. I said against the Jews, but it was by the Jews. And what the Jews did <clears throat> were they tried to find something wrong with the church in Smyrna and they gave that information to the Roman government, those the Roman leaders, to try to put down the church in Smyrna. And the, the, the upshot of it though was that many who were members of the church, believers of the church in Smyrna, <clears throat> lost their jobs, lost their positions, lost their status, as it were, lost their land, lost their homes, yeah, and therefore materially Smyrna became poor. But notice what Jesus said. I, I know you're, I, I, but you are rich. He said, you are rich, yet they were poor. They were materially poor, because many times people think, that if you are materially rich, then you must be spiritually rich, yeah? Well, this church in Smyrna was materially poor because of what happened to them as a result of the Jewish persecution. But they were spiritually rich. They were still believers, yes? You know, many times things will happen to us today. You'll say, well, you know what? A lot of bad stuff's happening to me today, you know? And I don't understand why. Well, the reason why is because you are a believer and you are in the world, but you're not of the world, yeah? Now, when I say of the world, the worldly the worldly system, if you will. Because many times, you know, we, this is a system, yeah, and it's a worldly system, and it's an unrighteous, sinful system. And if you're a believer, you don't fit, as it were, yeah. Well, why did that guy get the big job? Why did he get the house on the hill? Why did he get the house in Beverly, Brentwood, wherever, yeah, where the rich people live, and so forth like that, yes. Where do, where do you don't know that? How did they get what they have? And I've only got... Yeah, thus it's only got a Volkswagen, so to speak. Yeah, and they've got Rolls Royces and whatever. Yeah, Bentleys, whatever. I don't get it, Dr. Ray. Why is it that way? Yeah, well, there's a reason why it's that way. <clears throat> you know what God told us? Lay not up for yourself treasures where? On earth, but lay up for yourself treasures where? Where are our treasures to be? In heaven, yes. Why? Because if you lay up for yourself treasures on earth, well, they're going to be stolen from you. Somebody's going to break in. There are going to always be people trying to get your stuff, yeah, if you lay it up on earth. You say, okay, I got this and so, and I'm going to build up this big thing and fill up my barns with all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> okay. There was a scripture that says, well, if you gain all of this stuff, yeah, <clears throat> And, 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 and then call, God calls for your soul. What does that stuff profit you? Because you're going to leave it here and somebody else is going to use it. Yeah. Okay. So our treasures, when you get to heaven, you'll see this big stack, if you will, your treasures in this big, huge uh, mansion. Now, you know, Jesus said that he was going to, there are mansions in heaven. I, in my father's house are many mansions. I want to play a place for you where that I am there. You may be also because I will come and receive you unto me. Remember that scripture? Uh, that's a loose quotation of that scripture. Yeah. But <clears throat> uh, anyway, eventually we'll be in heaven and all those treasures, yeah, that you've been trying to obtain here in on in the earth realm, because God says it. He says, seek you first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things, all these treasures will be added up onto you. And when you get there, you're going to see a lot of that stuff. You know, so what, what do I do to earn this? Yeah, okay. Now, I didn't work eight hours a day. I didn't work uh, a 12-hour day. Yeah, I didn't have two or three jobs. Yeah, notice. That's what the world does, isn't it? Now remember, there's a guy, I think his name, the, the guy that, uh, 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 I think he's uh, the guy that uh, invented, I want to say, yeah, invented the Tesla automobile. Yeah, his name is Eli Musk, I believe. Well, he's told, he said, I'm working 120 hours a week. But there isn't 120 hours in a week. Right? Well, there's probably more than 120 hours in a week. But if you work 120 hours, yeah, in a week, there's very little time you got. Uh, that's 40, let's see, 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And he's working 120. Okay. <clears throat> that goes to show you that in order to get stuff or things, yeah, you're expected to work for it. Yeah. Well, God has a gift for you. You don't even have to work for it. 
Yeah, you don't have to work the things from God. There's no, as a matter of fact, your the little work that you can do down here would not be good enough. Yeah, Jesus has already done it, got all those things for us. Notice, if you will, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but a synagogue of Satan. In other words, there are people who say they are, that, that, that they are Jews. There are people who say that they are apostles. Also, I think we're going to see that in a moment, perhaps. Yeah, that they are apostles, and perhaps they are not apostles. Now, somebody said, well, Dr. Ray, what, does it, what qualifies you to be uh, an apostle then? Uh, okay. Well, <clears throat> number one, you're called by God. You're not called by yourself. You're not called by some other preacher. You're not... Uh, Elevated, yeah, because you've got a church with 20,000 people in it. That makes you an apostle. Yeah. No, that doesn't make you an apostle. God, the apostle Paul had no churches, nothing, yeah. As a matter of fact, the apostle Paul, when he became an apostle, was actually a Pharisee. And he was working against the church, killing people who were who were Christians. The apostle Paul was, yes, <clears throat> he was. And uh, therefore, then God called him, yeah, miraculously, you might say, to be an apostle. Well, I'm not saying he's going to call you miraculously to be an apostle, yeah. I'm not saying that uh, you cannot be an apostle today. I would never say that, yeah, because God can do what he wants to do, yeah. If he wants to make an apostle today, yeah, he can do that. But <clears throat> the truth of the matter is you cannot make yourself an apostle. Notice, but are a synagogue of Satan. Notice what verse 10 says. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. Can you imagine going into prison to be tested? Yeah. Well, you know, what's the best prison to go into nowadays? I don't know the best prison. Is it Sing Sing? Well, we don't have Alcatraz anymore, remember? They got rid of that one. It was such a bad place. Uh, and uh, well, inescapable is what it was supposed to be. It was Alcatraz. Anyway, they have uh, some prison today where they're they're uh, a little bit lax, so to speak. Somebody told me that the worst prisons to be in today are federal prisons. You know, if you're sentenced to ninety years, you're going to serve every you're going to serve every year of that ninety years. Unlike in some other prisons where you get a life sentence, five years, you get a, pro a probation, and you're out walking the streets. Yeah, notice. <clears throat> He says, you're going to be thrown into prison that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation. Yeah? What's tribulation? Tribulation means you're going through some bad things. Tribulation can't mean anything good. Bad stuff is going to happen to you. Notice what God says. Be faithful until death. In other words, even if you have to go to, through tribulation until you die, be, be faithful. Yeah? Be faithful. Notice. And I will give you the crown of life. Even if you have to die, you're going to get a crown of life now. Okay? A cr what's a crown of life? Somebody asked me once, uh, Dr. Ray. <clears throat> a crown of life is to live forever, yeah, with all the blessings of God that goes along with living forever. Now, there are others who will live forever because there are two different judgments of God, yeah? And we're going to get to those a little bit later on, but I can need to just throw interject a little bit right now, yeah? Because there are are two judgments. The first judgment is the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, found in uh, I think it's Second uh, Thessalonians chapter four, verses somewhere around eleven to sixteen or something like that. Anyway, there's another judgment, one that you don't want to have anything to do with. Yeah, you do not want to even be close to knowing what that one is about. You, it, it, as a, a, as being there. You don't want to be there because if you're there, you know, you've had it. It's over, yeah? Guess where your final resting place is going to be if you are at the white throne judgment. Now, before I get into the flight, white throne judgment, I need to mention the, the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is not to determine whether or not you're born again, yeah? If you're at the judgment seat of Christ, you have got it made. You know, they say made in shade, stirred with a spade, the best ice cream ever been made. That's what you've got. you got it made. If you're at the first judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, that's for to determine your crowns or whether you're going to get any crowns or whether you're going to get anything from God. Maybe you don't qualify for anything, but you're saved. Yeah. You've made it over, so to speak. Yeah. Even if you got no crowns over there. There might be somebody over there that got hundreds of crowns or something or other like that. But, 
You're a believer. You're born again. You're saved. You're going to live forever with Christ. Yeah? You're just not going to have as many mentions. Perhaps somebody else is going to have three or four mentions, and you're going to have just one. Yeah. One little mention as, as opposed to somebody who's got ten of them. Okay? That's basically what the judgment seat of Christ is about, crowned, if you will. Now, what about the white throne judgment? Well, the white throne judgment is not, underline the word not, not for believers. It is not for believers, but for unbelievers. Those who have rejected Christ as Lord and Savior will stand before Christ at the white throne judgment. You do not want to be there. Yeah? Because God's going to tell you all the things that you did wrong with your whole life. He's got it all written out. You know, some people say that, well, how do you know that, Dr. Ray? Well, the word says it. Yeah, he has a book called the Book of Life, if you will. Yeah? Okay. If your name is not found in the Book of Life, oh boy, you you know, forget it, man, if your name is not in there. And the only way that your name will not be in there, yeah, is because you have rejected Yeshua, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior. You know, your name won't be written down in the Book of Life. Yeah? And you'll stand at the white throne judgment. Yeah? So what's going to happen to me then, Dr. Ray? Okay. First of all, if you're standing at the white throne judgment, that's a, that's a, a precursor to the second death, right? You will have been in hell or Hades, if you will. But when you stand before the white throne judgment, after that is over with, you're going to be cast into Gehenna. What's Gehenna, Dr. Ray? That's a Greek word for lake of fire. Guess who's already going to be in there waiting for you at the uh, uh, in the lake of fire? The devil, yeah, all of his devilish angels, the the false prophet, yeah, and the antichrist will already be swimming in the lake of fire, right? Well, can I swim out of it, Doctor Ray? Is there any water in the lake of fire? It, it, notice we said lake of fire, right? If it's a lake of fire, then there's no water in there. Remember, uh, uh, Lazarus died with the rich man. Kind of a loose translation of that, yeah. Because I'm running close. Yeah, Lazarus and the and the rich man. When when, when uh, Lazarus died, he was in the in bosom of Abraham. Bosom of Abraham was also in Hades, but in a se- separate section of Hades, if you will. Yeah, Hades had two sections: the hell section and the paradise section. Well, when the when the uh, Lazarus, uh, the beggar Lazarus, died, he went into the bosom of Abraham, according to the Bible. And uh, there he was, right? He was fine, yeah? There was no fire. There was nothing wrong. He was good. He was like being in heaven, if you will, being in the paradise, yeah? But when the rich man died, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes in hell, yeah? Okay, if he was in hell, well, ultimately, he was going to get out of hell, the rich man, the rich man that is, and then he was going to stand before the white throne judgment of God, and after that, Cast into the lake that burneth with fire. You don't want that, do you? I, I, you, you may think, well, I, you know, I don't believe that, Doctor Ray, that God would allow any of His creation to be to be uh, cast into the lake of fire. No, he's trying to keep you out day by day, every day. Yeah, when you hear the gospel preached by all these preachers that are preaching the gospel, they tell you to come to Christ, and you ignore them. Yeah, keep on ignoring them, and guess what? You're going to end up being cast into the lake of fire after you stand before the white throne judgment of Christ. Yeah? Yeah, okay. You don't want that. You don't want that. Forget about that. Yeah. No, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to worry about that because you will have stood— at the judgment seat of Christ, right, for believers. Now, okay, I know we're getting close to out of time, but we're not quite. He who has an ear, let him hear, this is verse 11, what the Spirit says to the churches, more than one, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Do you realize there's a second death? Some people say, you know, you die once, then you don't have to die anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, you can call it die if you will. Yeah. I don't like the word die because I believe the believers don't really die like dogs and cats and mules and, and, and panthers. <laughs> I don't know the word panther. Where that come from? Yeah. We leave the body. Yeah. And, 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 and then uh, absent from the body, the Bible says, present with who? Present with the Lord. Yeah. 
paradise, incidentally, is no longer in the in the in the uh, bottom parts of the earth. Hell is, but paradise isn't there anymore. And the lake of fire is down there someplace. Yeah, hell, Hades, is not the lake of fire. That's something that's hotter. The, you know, hell is hot because we got that from Lazarus and the rich man. But the lake of fire is even hotter. You don't want to go there. You don't have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you go to heaven to be with the Lord forever. Okay, now we're almost out of time, and I need to mention the fact of the matter is that my name is Doctor Ray. Yeah, in case you're wondering well, who's that that preacher that thinks he knows some stuff. Yeah, well, preachers don't know everything, but we know that what God has revealed to us, this is what He's revealed to me. He might have revealed something else to you. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a church that's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. We have a service there every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. sharp. Everybody is welcome. All you have to do is show up. Yeah. You don't have to have a tie or a suit or a pair of shiny shoes. Yeah, or, 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 or a pocket full of money. Yeah, we're out of time. If this program has been a blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver.